Hi, everybody. Russ and my Amazon 11. Hope you're safe and well. If new channel, please consider subscribing. Hitting the bell icon. Yada, yada, yada. You know what we do. Um, I'd like to thank our ch channel sponsors, Untuck It. Check them out in the description below. We have, we're lucky enough to get another X Hammer to, on the channel, which is amazing. And uh, for those of you, if those of you, uh, obviously, we've got, we got Mr. Frank. How are you doing, Frank? How's things for you, man? Yeah, I'm good, mate. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm happy to be actually talking about stuff, all stuff West Ham and my time at West Ham. Considering that I was there for three years, I think it was, and yeah, I didn't play many games, but I was a youngster at the time. I see yeah, a few yeah. names, few names that you you've spoke to already, big names that you've done really well for West Ham. So you know, a chance just to speak about West Ham, which I really loved, is you know, I'm I'm, I'm going to enjoy this one. There you go. That's it. Thank you for today's episode. <laughs> yeah, no, as I said, Frank, Frank, I, I was, he was only a pup. He was 17 when he joined us. And he said three years yeah. he was at the club. Uh, arguably, those three years was an extremely ever-changing time at West Ham, I think. Technically, yeah. in those three years, I think Frank played under three managers, uh, a new new owner, relegation and promotion. Yeah, yeah. It was chaotic. <laughs> yeah, it, was, Crazy, it, was, it was chaotic, mate, honestly. I think I know we're going to get into a lot of stuff, well, my time there, but it was more, it's, it's like a blur, really, for me, yeah. even like looking back on it now, considering the amount of clubs I've, I've been at after that. Um, but uh, today, I, I did try my best to try to remember a lot of things. So, no, no, it was, it was a crazy time, but in the end, you know, West Ham are where they are right now, and they should be in the Premier League. So, that's the main yeah, thing. Too right. And, and, and Frank's, Frank's at Plymouth at the moment. He's doing a right Plymouth at the moment, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, enjoying it. Yeah, yeah, Plymouth for a good club, a good yeah. size club. So, yeah, I'm just, I'm just really enjoying it. Obviously, with the COVID stuff going on now, you know, it's, it's difficult for players, particularly in the lower leagues, to, yeah. to find a club somewhere and, you know, be stable. So, uh, you know, I've come off a couple of good seasons so, in, in League Two and, and, and that. So, to be in League One now with this team, we've got a lot of momentum on our side. So, hopefully, like, that can continue. Yeah, and, and, and the family are okay and stuff like that since we've been yeah. here now for you? Yeah. Yeah, the family are here with me now in Plymouth, so good. That's the main thing, isn't it? Just, just keep everyone close. So it is. nothing it is, really it? changes for us as well. We've got two little kids, little, little girls, so they just go to school and and stay home. So nothing really changes for us. We don't really. <laughs> have There's no time for us anyway. So no. I will try to is that oh my yeah, moment? The only thing that changes for me is not, which I quite like about lockdown in a way, is is I'm a bit lazy when it comes to weekends, and I'm yeah, if there's no football yeah. on, I'm quite happy to not have to be dragged yeah. to Lakeside or something like that. So it's yeah, quite yeah. nice. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Although I ended up at a garden centre at the weekend, and I think everyone in in South End and everywhere around there seemed to go to this garden centre because it was right. like an hour and a half to get in. It was like why? Yeah. Yeah. Got like teen, it's people so uh, clucking to do some shopping. Yeah, so, something for me, any excuse in it to just go do something. Yeah, uh, for me, I'm quite, I'm quite happy to be home. To be honest with you, yeah, so. me too. No, it's oh, good. Yeah, no, it's good, man. And as I said, it's it's funny with, with, with you, Frank. I, I, it's like I always keep an eye out for it's some some people go and like you and and Zavon and people like that. Yeah. I always kept an eye out where you were yeah. when you're at your other club. So you know, obviously yeah, you're at Colchester nice. for a while, then you went to obviously Plymouth. So um, yeah, it's great. And obviously he's back to cut the goals this season. And yeah, yeah. It's, it yeah. seems to be no, 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 I mean, we're still ticking away. Yeah, so it's good. Yeah, still still ticking yeah. away. <laughs> <laughs> still ticking away. You know. oh, I feel like I've been in the game a long time. So. Well, you uh, have, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I have exactly. So, for me to, I, I still feel like I've got a lot of powers within my body to do well. So, yeah, yeah. you know, it's it's good that I, I'm I found a club like Plymouth to try showcase my talents. I think we were in the telly the other day as well. So it was good. Uh, it's, yeah. it's, it's going well for me, mate. Good, good. That's good to good to see. And as you said, as we said, you know, you, you joined. You joined when you were seventeen, and you know, yeah. and and you were and you were at Chelsea for like since you were like under twelves or whatever. Um, yeah. And famously, obviously, that you turned down the contract offer from Chelsea to join West Ham. Yeah. Why? Why, Frank? Why did you choose us instead of West instead of Chelsea? Um, it's at a, it's pretty easy, really. At the time, mm. I was coming through at Chelsea. Really enjoyed my time there, you know, coming through the ranks, playing an age group above every year. So I was really doing well. Sure. So to be offered a deal, um, I've, I think there's about six or seven English lads that were um, left in the youth team. Because you have to remember, at this time, this is the start of when the foreign players were coming through yeah. in, the, in the youth teams. So at Chelsea, we had like six or seven um, French players, you know, German players who were really talented and highly rated. Yeah. And for us to still be in that group, it just showed that we were doing well as well. 
So I got offered a deal and the six other lads who were English lads with me, my youth team, who I come up with, they never got offered anything. So I was a bit like, okay, I'm, I feel a bit like the chosen one, but at the same time, yeah. where's the last person that's come through at Chelsea to, you know, go on and do big yeah, things? Yeah. That was literally my conversation with my dad and uh, my mates. Um, that, it was John Terry. Yeah. So, and I see a few older lads like Jimmy Smith and I think Michael Manson was there. Um, a few other players who were older than me, a bit three, four years older than me, but I was playing with them in the reserves at 15. Mm-hmm. So I was thinking to myself, they're really good players, but not, they're not going to get a sniff. And Jose Marino just came and the pressure was on to win the title straight away, big money, Roman Brevich, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah. and the youngsters at the time weren't getting paid, you know, the money that the youngsters are getting paid now. Uh, yeah. you know, I'm not going to be free. I'll be honest with you. If I was going to be offered the money that kids are on now at them clubs, I would have stayed. Yeah, of course you would, yeah. It's life, it's life changing money for your family and yeah. stuff like that. So, um, but for me, it was just about going out there and just play football and try mm-hmm. to get as close as I can to a Premier League game. That's what every kid wants to do, play yeah, football. And uh, when West Ham came along, which it actually came quite late, so I was about to sign the deal at Chelsea then, even though I was going back and forth with them, I, I said no. And then they came back with another two more years added to my contract at Chelsea. So it, it was four years pro and one year scholarship um, with Neil Bath. And I said, I was about to go sign and then uh, then West Ham came along. Zola had come and trained with us a few times at Chelsea course, and, yeah. and seen me uh, uh, train with the first team and reserves. And uh, Steve Clark as well mm. uh, uh, was obviously in the deal as well. So no, yeah, as soon as West Ham came, it was a no-brainer really. In my head, it was another massive club. It was a club also that I felt quite fond of because in our youth team days, we used to beat them a lot. I just got a lot of goals. Here. So I thought, you know what, if I go over there, then at least, you know, I already have a good feeling of a club that yeah. I feel like, you know, it's somewhere I can go and do well. Sure. Um, and yeah, so yeah, I ended up going to West Ham. Yeah, and, and that was that was in the July. And then obviously you made you made your Premier League debut in the August, wasn't it, that year? So Yeah, yeah, yeah. I did, yeah, Wolves, I did, yeah. wasn't it? Yeah, my, I think my first game was... Um, it was Wolves, wasn't it? I Arsenal. Think. I think it was Arsenal. I played in a cup. Yeah. I started. I started in the cup yeah. game. It was on telly, uh, BBC. I think it was, and uh, we. I think we drew or lost that game. I'm not sure, but Diamante scored. <laughs> yeah, he went through on goal, and he could have squared me the ball. I was fuming. <laughs> I remember. I remember that moment. I think to myself, because you know, goals goals change careers, right? Totally. Look at Freddie said, right? He scored in his debut. You know I mean, now nobody's forgotten about that. You know, I rated him as a player, so yeah, regardless yeah. of that. But he still that kept him. You know, give him another chance and another yeah, chance, true. stuff like that. So um, for me, yeah, I, I, I wish he passed me the ball for the goal. But anyway, we went at 1-0 and uh, I think it was 1-0 when I come off. So I'm thinking, all right, we're going to get a replay. Zola's really looked after the youngsters. I might get a chance yes. to play at some of the Emirates they were at now. Yeah. Um, but then uh, they made a few changes. I think Fabri has come on and they scored a, a late goal. But then, yeah, later on, yeah, come on against Wolves, uh, which was obviously a very proud moment in my, yeah. my life. It's coming on. I think we won the game as well. Yeah, too. Um, yeah, two 0 Yeah, so I, I, yeah, I come on in that game, and yeah, I just remember Mark Noble just just telling me to relax, even if you come on for two minutes, just yeah. embrace, it, run around, and I think I touched the ball maybe twice as well in that time, so I was buzzing. Yeah, yeah, that's what I mean. As you said, you know, your dream was to play Premier League football, and at seventeen, oh, you're cool. you're now playing. You've played a Premier League game. You know, for a lot of people, I mean, you know, people that's would it. die to be in that position, but oh, nah. Cool. Yeah. And and you're right. I think Zola's Zola, and and I think I think it's a trouble, wasn't it, with Zola? Zola was very much about bringing the kids through and and stuff yeah. like that. And then obviously, he goes, and then you get Grant and Allardyce in, who yeah. knows bits of them. It's more about experience than youth for them, weren't it? And so it was like for you, yeah. it was like you was ended up going on loan quite a bit. And yeah, um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, it was difficult because uh, yeah. no Zola. It was quite emotional when Zola left, really, for me. Because, uh, yeah, because he, you know, he, he gave me my debut, and he, yeah. he he tried to give the young players a chance. Like uh, we had, mm. we had like, Payne was around then, Zavon Hines, Junior Stanislas. You know, these boys, James Tonkins, uh, Jack Collinson, all these boys were coming through and doing well for West Ham. Yeah, and mainly the fact that Zola wanted to give us a chance and play. I think yeah. that year we, I think we we survived. Did we survive that? Yeah, we survived that year. Um, the first year was Zola, or my first year was Zola, sorry, his yeah. last year. But then obviously he resigned. So, um, you know, it was, it was devastating, really. Went to his house and, you know, it was it was, it was was a sad sad moment, really, for me and my family. Because yeah. he might have thinking, you know, this is my break and this is my guy that's going to help me, um, push me. And he, he was he was great. He used to train with us, the best trainer you could see. 
at a 40 year old he was one of the best players at the club um, yeah. still at that age so no yeah. it was unbelievable for them. but then yeah Adam Grant came which was a car crash in itself um the boys didn't know what I was a youngster then and I went alone a few times that year but I, I could just sense how the unease at the club yeah um yeah. It, was, it was a difficult time I yeah. you know I I, 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 don't, I don't mind saying that at all. It was a difficult time. And obviously the club got relegated that year. So it was, yeah, overall, it was a, it was a bad year. It was. It was, yeah, bad. It was, it was a it bad, was. Year, bad year. And for, for a youngster that, that was in that change room or in and around mm. this sort of thing, you know, I'm watching some of the boys like, you know, the Scott Parkers and the Mark Nobles and mm. you know, the leaders in the group, Carton Coles and stuff like that. Yeah, I, I could just see even their enthusiasm was drifting um, yeah. as the month yeah. was going on. Which you find difficult because I used to like lean on someone like Mark Noble to come cheer me up every morning, okay. even though I wasn't really good. But he is the one that I used. To, he made me feel relaxed to want to be around the first team. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. In, in them days, um, you know, even with him, I could see, like, you could see the club not going in the right direction. And obviously, yeah. it, it, it turned out on the results at, uh, in the end, didn't yeah. it? So yeah, they got really good. Yeah, and and you're right. I mean, you said that the, the players get a sense, and obviously from the young players seeing the experienced players looking yeah. frustrated, it's only going to rub off on you guys, really, isn't it? To be fair, so it is, yeah, it is. yeah. I mean, um, you, you only spoke. I, I, I don't. I can't remember him speaking. To be honest with you, um, I can't. Honestly, I can't. I don't know what kind of manager style he had, but it was it was something def definitely different to anything yeah. I had. I was a kid, obviously. You know, the older boys can maybe vouch for what they thought their experience was, but. Yeah, he was um he was a bit of a weird one. Um yeah. from honest with you. Yeah, it was it was difficult. And again, like I said, the results showed on the field that, you know, eventually we went down. So big yeah, Sam had yeah. to come in and rejuvenate the group. Yeah, 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 that's no, a good point. Yeah, and, and my results don't lie, don't it? You know, it's, no, at the end of the day, no. the teams that go down the bottom are the ones aren't you know, get relegated as a team. Yeah. So it weren't it weren't due to lack of quality either. I think the no, team itself. Not at all. Was was definitely a mid-table team. It just yeah. um, it just went working, yeah. It just it just went working. I mean, we signed some good players. I mean, I think Denver Bar was there when he, he scored a few goals. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Like good players. It just yeah, it just went working. Overall. Showed you, doesn't it? It just shows you how how important the manager is to a team. You can have, I mean, you know, yeah. we we went down with a team that was never going down on forty-two points with like Defoe and players like that in yeah. two thousand. Yeah. So anything's possible, but yeah, it's um. Yeah. It, it just shows you uh, the managers it makes such a difference, and so that's why yeah. I quite like the way West Ham are set up at the moment. Now with with Moisey, he seems to have a little bit of more of that workman like yeah. attitude. You know, he's not yeah. not flamboyant. He's not a flashy manager, and I think we saw no, him at the moment. So, no, um, I think I think he's a good leader though. So he's yeah. a leader, and that's quite important as a manager. You know, if yeah. you're going to hire someone, you need to be comfortable that this guy can, you know, sort of run the dressing room, but also have some sort of charisma with him and yeah. i think maybe david moy does have that and yeah he, uh, does, yeah come on come on respect so uh, yeah yeah i think that's probably doing well yeah i think he does and i think the players respect him uh, and, and that's really important and, and the, the background background staff as well you said with zola you had steve clark and steve clark was such an influence on you as well right. and yeah. like at west ham now you've got people like stuart pierce and alan irvine and yeah. and, and kevin Nolan, Nolan. you know yeah. so you've got no so you've got some good players good good people around you and i think that's really important but yeah and, and it's a shame because obviously I mean, what's it like for a for a kid like yourself? Obviously, you broke into the Premier, you, you know, played the Premier League. You know, it's like, and then like, what's I'm it like being set? I've, I've got a little squirrel over there. Oh, hey. I can say hello. <laughs> <laughs> hey, can you leave hello, please? <laughs> she's back from school. Mommy, like that. <laughs> Mommy can you get Naya, please? Oh, she's cute. All right, oh, Naya, you. what a beautiful name. Yeah, she's cute. Yeah. Yeah, I've I've got, got, my, mine's still at school. I've got to pick her up from after school club in a bit. So yeah, all right. well, <laughs> I'll leave her after school club till five. But, yeah, sorry, um, I'll repeat that again. No, I was gonna. I'm just gonna say, like, obviously, you know, you you, you break into the you break into the, the first team, you get some games, and then obviously everything happens. And then, what's it like for a, a kid being sent out on loan? What's because obviously, I mean, that yeah. three years, I think you're alone was it seven different clubs or something like that. Yeah, what's it yeah. like for you? Because obviously, mental well being and all that stuff is, is really topical. What was it like yeah. for you as a developing player? Um, yeah, it was difficult, it was, it was very difficult. Uh, mm. looking back at it now, like I wouldn't, I wouldn't wish that upon an, another youth team player or you know, young sure. player below 21 to go on loan so many times, yeah. but at the time, maybe I wasn't getting advised as well as I, I should have been. But, you know, football, is, 
it's all about generation. So I think at the time, it's just about just trying to showcase what I could do yeah. and not trying to bide my time, really. Just trying to show the manager at my current club that, listen, I'm ready to, you know, being around the first team. Yeah. And I, did, I guess I weren't content with just training. Yeah. I really wanted to go out there and play. Some of the loans mm -hmm. worked out, some of them didn't. But it went for the lack of wanting to do well. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, it was it was difficult, and even when I went on loan, I I never had any aftercare or in terms of like someone reporting back to me, seeing how Frank's doing, is he doing well? Sure. Um, yeah. You know, why didn't he play this week? Because now, as an older player, I hear players that come on loan, they're getting phone calls every week from their yeah. club. Yep, yep, yep. Out what they've done, you know, if they're doing well, and you know, why is he not playing? Or they're they're forcing them to play. Whereas me, it was like, all right, you're going on loan, you know, uh, we'll see you back in two three months or when, whenever yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah. And, you know, I just dealt with my own devices, really. I went out alone. I, I just tried to be the, a, a man at that young age, 18, 19. Yeah, exactly. And it was difficult. I was going to some change rooms where, you know, as an older player now, when I see youngsters come in a change room, I always try to welcome them, in, welcome them in and make them feel at home. At that time, it, it wasn't the case. So it was always yeah. like, you're fighting your way in, oh, you're the West Ham boy. You think you're yeah. better than everyone else, stuff yeah. like that. So yeah. I quickly found, you know, the hardship of football quite a, a young age. But I, listen, I... I don't regret it at all. Actually, it's actually made me the person I am today. So exactly, yeah, quite, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, it's, 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 it's toughened you up. I've, yeah, I've quite lucky I've had experiences. So yeah, yeah. And you get, as you said, you can and you can impart them on 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 young. I mean, you're hardly that old man, Frank, but you can impart yeah. them on the young on the younger. You said the younger guys coming on loan, yeah, and obviously yeah, I know yeah. now, I know yeah. now, like Conch, Konchesky is is like one of the loan guys, and he's the one who yeah. phones up that play. But yeah, it's it's interesting to see him like back then. You know, what was he? eight years ago something like nine years ago yeah. didn't have that and it's just yeah it's, 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 bad, difficult. It's, difficult. it's, it's difficult obviously if i let's say i went on loan my, one of one of the loans let's say i scored a hat full of goals or loads of goals yeah. obviously then it's like okay frank's done really well now he's pressurizing his club but that's not the that's not the end goal of a loan a loan is meant to be going out there so you can gain some experience yeah and come back to your club and hopefully you know showcase what you can do when you come back it was like I was out there and trying to be on a shop window. So um, I felt a lot of pressure, but at the same time, like mm -hmm. I said, listen, I, I learned a lot of things out there. So yeah. it's all good. Exactly. And, and, but when you were at West Ham, you played in, in the famous Millwall game. Oh, what a crazy <laughs> now, obviously, for those of you, for those talking about that with you, that's crazy. Mate. For those of you who don't know the game, obviously, it was yeah we played Millwall. I think it's the last time we played Millwall. We've seen well, it was last time, obviously, yeah. at the at the old stadium. We were we were one nil down after twenty six minutes, and uh, and Frank came on, and you set up the equaliser actually, didn't you? Yeah, I, did, and I think yeah. we scored in like the eighty ninth, and then the ninth like, in two goals in, in extra time. But yeah. it was marred with with crowd trouble. That's what oh, we call it. Days. Honestly, the day the day itself was obviously crazy with you know uh, the unfortunate news with Jack. Of course, yeah, yeah, and, um, yeah. It, it was already a, it was already a crazy start to, but but even before the game, the manager was telling us, look, don't drive your cars in because the Millwall fans might take your reg, and you you know God knows you don't want people following you know and really? stuff like that. Wow. Yeah, I think we got on a coach from a hotel, might have been in Canary Wharf, and went yeah. to the game. Obviously, as a youngster, I live near Millwall, so my family, yeah. we grew up in Deptford, Lewisham, so it's quite near the Millwall area. And my school was actually like five minutes from the stadium, my secondary school. So I, I know the rivalry. I knew it from like from young. So actually to be involved in the game, I was buzzing. I couldn't wait for the game. Yeah. I, was, I was thinking like, this is a chance, you know, then a division below or maybe League One. I'm not sure what league they were in. But um, there's a chance for a few of us, like Junior, Zav, you know, Jack, yeah. all of us, just showcase what we could do, hopefully. But obviously, yeah, the game was just mad. Like I was on the bench, and I, I heard there was trouble in the in the crowd, and that someone might have been attacked or stabbed in the in the back, like behind me, a few seats behind. So I was thinking, well, that's just that's just not what you want to hear when you're on the bench. But no. that just showed you how the anxiety of the game was. Yeah, uh, uh, and obviously coming on and then you know getting the win and Zavon scoring and Junior, I think Junior scored as well. Um, yeah, he scored. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah, it was unbelievable. Then obviously I got confronted with a fan. Uh, yeah, I saw the picture again. I googled the picture. It's like you, yeah. some like about my size, literally my size. Like, yeah, it's yeah. like looking at you. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know whether it was a New Wolf fan or West Ham fan. To be honest with you, so get those shirts. I, you couldn't yeah. tell, could you? My thoughts was like that. Like, put my hand in front of him just just to see what he wanted to do. But he gave me a colour, and then I okay. beat, beat okay. run up the pitch. But um, yeah, the main thing is that we won that game because that would have been yeah. murders if we, oh. did, if we lost yeah. that game. And it was uh, also because. 
because of Jack as well, because of his dad and you know and yeah, exactly that yeah. for him. And you know, there's yeah. nothing there's no word that can describe how he felt anyway. So no. I think we were, I don't know, we don't know what to say to him to mercy on the day, no. so it's difficult. But no. one day and yeah. um yeah, it, it just made everything a little bit better to, to win that game and it was such a it's a derby, isn't it? I wish that game was a Premier League game because uh <laughs> That would be fun to watch. It would be fun to watch, wouldn't it? Yeah, fun to watch. One they hope would be behind closed doors at the moment. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, oh, it would be fun if Millwall won a Premier League now, wouldn't it? So, could you imagine? Yeah. <laughs> it's like every time a cup draw happens, it's like, oh, God, please don't be I'm Millwall. Not. I was I'm the not. safest place. I was so, I was, I was up next to the, so the announcer's box was next to the right. police control room. So oh, okay. I was like, I was up there, I was up top. I was, I was fine. I was just watching everything. And then yeah. I could see all the police videos, uh, you know, the screens where all the trouble was outside and stuff. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Even the chance and that, oh, it's crazy. Neil Harris oh. was there for them. Like, it was just, you know, it was a good, it was a good game to be involved in. Just put it that way. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's one to tick off the bucket list, isn't it? Really. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, when, I, when we interviewed Jack, he was saying, yeah, because obviously he, he told he told the boys he was going to play, and, and I think when he scored, I think Zav went up to him and said, "That's for your dad," and and yeah. that and then that, that set him off. That almost set him off, bless him. But uh, yeah, cool, cool. yeah, and then there's a picture of, of uh, there's a picture of Ben, you know, the, the operations director, like hugging him and, and, the, and the other bodyguard as well. And yeah, it was yeah, a yeah. very, very, very strange time. But as you said, no, it was very a, strange. Very strange. yes, um, yes. very emotional. Well. No, oh, yeah, definitely. But you say because you know more, you know, everyone's together. I mean, that must have been like a, a, a the, the dressing room. Obviously, you got people like Scott Parker and you got people like Mark Noble. You were there with and Colton. Yeah. A lot of banter, a lot of banter going around. It must oh, have been unbelievable, a bit difficult. unbelievable change for us. For me, when I was oh, coming through at West Ham, it was unbelievable because yeah. the, there was a good, uh, a lot of English players, well, British players there, and even the you know the for the foreign players that came over, they 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 all indulged in the West Ham like kind of fighting spirit sort of thing and how the club was run, you know, and even the academy and all the coaches. Uh, Kev King was there, you know, Tony Carr, you know, these these legendary names at the club. So. No, it was it was brilliant, really. Even off the field, you know, the boys looked after the youngsters. You know, whether if there was a party going on, all the youngsters would be invited, you know, and they looked after us. Like, no, no, on a serious note, there was it was a very good, very good, good core to the group. I'd say. Yeah, and yeah, that, that's that's always been the way when we've interviewed players, um, ex players. They, they said the same thing. You know, every, it doesn't matter what sort of era they've come from there's always a really good core of people and, and yeah. that's what you need particularly for a young players what you need man isn't it because you need that's that what, sort of what you need and I, I, re, I wish that the only wish i had now would be that the i came through now with that core now uh yeah. you know as much as how the young players are pushed in the premier league and mm-hmm. you know it's all about young players now when you see england teams and stuff like that they're pushing yeah. to do really well you know i think at the time people like zavon was playing on the 21s football and if he was playing in this era you know then players would have been pushed even more to do really well. You see what Stanislas has gone on to do. He could have been a West Ham player for years, years on years. He's another youngster that thought he needed to go somewhere else and to get some more game time. So um, even Tom, like Tomkins, Tomkins should be a West Ham legend. He yeah. should still be there. But, you know, it's just different times and different areas. Life is all about timing, isn't it? So, it is, yeah. um, you know, some, some things have a reason, don't they? So different paths for everyone. But, yeah, no, great times. Yeah, good. Right. Let's, we've, we've mentioned a few players and it's like, obviously, the whole point of this show is called My Hammers 11. So the idea is everyone yeah, we get okay. on, whether yeah. it's a fan or an, or an ex-player, we get them on to do their 11. So for you, for the ex-players, yeah. it's the players you've played with. So we can say across yeah. those three years, the players you played yeah. with. And, yeah. um, you know, we can play whatever formation. We can keep it simple, 4-4-2. You can right. play yourself, Frank, to get your appearances up. Oh, yeah, yeah. I could do that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, so, I, you know what? I, actually wrote, I actually wrote down some names. Just oh, because I forgot, I forgot a few players in the squad, but some of the yeah. squads I was involved in, oh, well, when I was there, there's not, some unbelievable names. Just A lot yeah. of them weren't in their prime. So nah. it's quite frustrating. It's quite frustrating. They, re- they really are, Frank. They really I are know, in their prime. Oh, I, 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 yeah. <laughs> we'll get people back. like you, we'll get people like you at the beginning of your career, or we we'll get people like Teddy at yeah. the end of his career. I know, you don't I get know. those ones in the pump. No, you but don't. You don't. I've, you get the bookends. I'm, yeah, I was looking at that. I was thinking we had we had Benny McCarthy at the club. We had like, you know, uh, what's his name, uh, uh, Bomote at the club. Players yeah. like that, like Hitzelsberger. These players we just didn't have them at their prime. Uh, yeah. Ben Rami, all these players. Like we had some great players. All right, cool. Did, so yeah. I, I, let's, I go go. Go on, let's go and go first, mate. We go with Rob Green because he was he was yeah. the ever present number one when I was there, and yeah. you know, played for England. So um, and he yeah, he was a good character as well. 
you know, keepers are quite weird. So he, 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 was, he was a very weird character as well, but I loved his weirdness. Yeah, um, he's, so, yeah he's a he's funny probably, man. Yeah, no, he's he's a good and yeah, we have he comes up a lot when we interview the player like like uh, because he's just uh, so unusual. He wasn't like your typical keeper. Like you said, no, he's, no, he's a bit, he's, he's, but he's different. But I, I loved him. He looked after me and a lot of the young boys as well, actually. So he's great. Like brilliant. Yeah, lovely guy. I hope we we'll put Greeno in. Go on. Yeah. Uh, let, let's go for left back. Left All right, back. left back. Yeah, left back is it's difficult because Wayne Bridge was there when I was there as well. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, Bridgie was there again. He wasn't at his prime, but he was still a good player. Um, I had a Lunga there as well. Uh, who I really rated because he actually took me under his wing in terms of like just trying to be a responsible young man. Um, he, he was there, and we had uh, McCarthy as well. He was there, yeah, George, and he, he was unbelievable. But I'm gonna go for a Lunga just because he he looked after me, he took me under his wing. So I'll go for him. Good, Rita Lunga. Yeah. He was brilliant. A bit crazy. Um, he, crazy yeah. eyes. He had really crazy yeah. eyes. And ten eyes. <laughs> yeah, he was a bit scary. That's probably why I liked him. Oh, yeah. I, I got on with him because he, he put me there a few times. But he was a great lad. Just unfortunate, a few injuries. But um, yeah, when he played and was on fire, he was basically un unplayable. Like, mm -hmm. No one could beat him. Strong. Mm -hmm. And just played it simple, really. So good lad. Yeah, good lad. All right. Well, let's go. Let's put him left back. Let's go right back. Let's go the other side. Who we can go right back then, Frank? Yeah, Julian Fulbert. I'm going to go Julian Fulbert. Julian. Just because he played for Madrid and um, he had unbeatable cars. Uh, nah, he's a, he's what, what, what a character, what a guy, really. And uh, had an unbelievable cross on him as well. So I've, I've, I'm going to put Julian Fulbert in there. Just because, again, the person, the person he was, he was an unbelievable character. Yeah. And he was another one with injury when we when we'd signed him. Like, and I remember oh. he was the first player. You know, when you sign or someone gets linked to a club, if your club, you, you do the whole YouTube thing and go and look at his clips. Yeah. You know, his, and yeah. he was the first one I remember doing that. And he was like, "Oh my god, right. this guy is rapid!" And then yeah. we sign him, and he does his a kit, his Achilles in, and then that's I it. Know. Yeah. I know. He had so many like injuries and a lot of muscle injuries as well. That yeah, um, held him back a bit, but. When he was on on blob, he was he was really really good. So I'll, yeah, I'll pick him. Yeah, uh, nice bloke. Right, go on in. Let's go center off. He's your first center off then. Center back. I'm gonna go um, Gabridon. I'm gonna go Gabs. Yep. Just because the, the bloke could do anything. Like he could run with the ball. He could he could uh, outrun his striker. He could be strong, good in the air. Just just good at everything. Really um, read the game well. Great lad. Good leader as well. Honestly, he, was a, he had everything. Again, I probably didn't meet him at his peak of his powers, but what I saw was enough for me to say when he's yeah. playing, I, I feel comfortable. And, and a DJ as well, you know. He's I didn't know that until, uh, until he, hasn't, he, hasn't, he hasn't done much since the second lockdown. I've really disappointed. Yeah. It, was, it was great background that. noise. Yeah, I see that. His roof. Yeah. <laughs> I see that, yeah. He's a, he's nice. good, he's a nice guy. Right, we could put Gabs in. Who's Gabs going to partner in the middle in that centre back position then? Ah, it was between Tompkins and uh, Winston Reed. Yeah. Um, Upson was there as well, but I'm going to go for uh, Winston. I'm going to go with Reedy. Just because um, for me, obviously, I love Tompkins. So I, I, I wish Tompkins stayed there and played yeah. a lot me of games. Um, Reed, just because. I felt like he he had he had a little bit more in terms of like his physicality. He could like run anyone, you know, unbelievable in the air. Again, another one of injury. He had a bad injury, so it kind of held him back a bit. But I think when he's on blob, he could play with any centre half in the Premier League. Yeah. He could be comfortable. So um, I'll go with Winston Reid. But it was a tight call between them two. Yeah, and he's. I mean, he, bless him. He's he's, do, he's playing well at, for Kansas at the moment. In yeah, the, I know. MLS, I know. so you know. Might yeah, come yeah, back, you know. He might come back, man. You know, January. Yeah, no, yeah, no Winston, Winston, he's definitely he's up there for me. And he was yeah, quite young yeah. when he signed as well, so we kind of got a long way. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Right, let's go into midfield then. Uh, left. So we play for left midfield. Is that is that what you got set up? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll play four four two. I'm gonna go. Nice. Um, I'm gonna go Victor Obina. Victor Obina. Do you know I've got to type yeah. that one in? That's that's yeah. the, that's the first one for Victor. Yeah, I'm gonna go Victor Obina. Well, yeah, because when I was there, he was, um, he could just always, he was always a goal threat. Always yeah. a goal threat. He loved the chop and strong as an ox. But yeah, just the season that I, I witnessed him, he was always, he was always a goal threat. And I, I, for wide men, I, I don't think we were blessed with wide men that were prolific anyway at West Ham. Yeah. 
Um, but we had youngsters like Junior was coming through, and uh, but we didn't really play wide men when I was there in my three years. So I'm sure. gonna go. With, I'm gonna go with Victor Abina. I thought he was. And again, uh, that didn't really help you out not playing with wide men, did it? No, I didn't. Honest, for your game. Afraid. <laughs> it's insane because I thought, you know, at that time, obviously, I'm, I'm really quick. I'm a youngster that at Chelsea, yeah. I, played, I played wide a lot as well. So coming to West Ham, it was like, you, you need to try to carve your game into a cotton cold type style, which is a bit frustrating for me because I was thinking, well, Carlton's just a different player to me. He has his yeah. great, great at a lot of things, but he's just a different player to me. So, sure. um, yeah, he's a bit frustrating. But again, like I said, Victor was a, a big threat. So I'm going to put him wide. Yeah, great. That's a great shout. I forgot about Victor a bit. That's what I loved in this show because you yeah. get these round. Like Victor was brilliant. He was. Is it so exciting? Yeah. Uh, so unpredictable. Right. Who's gonna go on the other wing on the right wing then? Uh, right wing. I'm gonna go Alessandro Diamanti. Oh, it's a great team. Loving this yeah. team. I'll go Alessandro Diamanti. Best because one, if we had a free kick anywhere, I trust him to produce something magical. And he yeah. just had unbelievable. You're probably the best technician I've played with at West Ham. Uh, sure. Just because that the left foot was a joke, uh, yeah. honestly, he could find you know the corner of the corner like he was just unbelievable um, at finishing. And again, when he when he was on blob, when he was on fire, he was actually unplayable. So um, sure, I'm gonna, yeah, I'm gonna go Diamanti. Brilliant, uh, he's a great player. Uh, yeah, he was, and again, he was like he was a bit crazy, wasn't he as well? So he, he, was, like, he, was, he was like a Payet sort of player, sort of yeah. thing. Like you know, he could produce magic at any moment, and obviously. Yeah. It, Obviously, Payet was a bit, a bit, a bit more of a better player, but Diamante is similar kind of yeah. player. Yeah, he had that sort. Of, he was like the sort of Venn diagram of Payet and Di Canio. He was like in the yeah, middle. He had that, middle. Yeah, he was he had a bit that crazy. craziness. Yeah, I love him. His hair was all over the gaff. Do you know what I mean, I love it. <laughs> right, brilliant. And and he played because he he went to China same as you, didn't he? he did. And so, he what did. was it like? What was it like playing in China, man? I was mental, like, mental, mental. Co the culture difference was crazy. Yeah, um, even going out there. It was a it was a random uh, call that I got during the summer. I just left Ipswich, and um, yeah, I got the call, and I thought I'm 24. If I'm gonna ever experience abroad, uh, mm -hmm. let me go for it. Now I went there. The stadium was filled, 50,000 seat stadium. Everyone in there. I thought, you know what? This is, a, this is a this is a thing I'm gonna regret not doing. So I went out there. Yeah, and, uh, yeah talk about that we need another hour so that was crazy yeah yeah okay okay that one if we need any content <laughs> later on yeah <laughs> right okay let's go central midfield he's gonna be your first center midfield then central um, midfield yeah, is quite easy really yeah we've got mark noble in there yeah um just because he's nicked my, he nicked my last name so i'm gonna let him go in there um <laughs> no 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 was unbelievable really uh another one that was a great character led by example um, in training, I used to love training with him just because he always used to try and megs me and I'll try to megs him back as well. He used to do one twos around me and go, Oh, Frank, where are you going, son? Like, he used to, he used to make me laugh every day. Um, but uh, yeah, proper, proper, proper fella. He is Mr. West Ham as well. I don't, I don't ever yeah. want to see him bad, badly spoken about him. He loves the club to bits. So if he does say anything and do anything, it's for the club. Yeah, definitely. No, you're, you're right. I mean, he's, uh, yeah, and I can hear him saying that as well. And you say, my friend, you can just hear it. He's like, he's, he's got the tongue. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, Mr. West Ham. Right. Okay. Okay. Nobs is in. Who's, who's he going to partner them in yeah, that Scott central? Parker. Scott Parker. Nice, yeah. strong. Yeah. Scott Parker. Yeah. The most consistent player I played with at West Ham. Sure. Or, you know, I witnessed at West Ham. He was the most consistent. But I don't even need to say much more than that, really. He's just, just consistent really he played played a six or seven out of ten every game mostly sevens he had this turn on him he used to turn on a sixpence all the time in midfield no one could get the ball off him he used to, i think javi used to do it as well but obviously scott being english and quiet and no one would ever noticed what he was doing but yeah. he was a able player and he just yeah was hot on his sleeve really so uh, yeah, good luck yeah, top top guy and yeah colton talks about that um that west brom game where they were three nil down down and gave the uh he gave the team talk instead of Avram Grant and you know he was all crying and they grew yeah. free all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there yeah. you go. Right. Okay, up front, Frank. Who are we gonna have up front? Who's your first striker? Uh my first striker is I'm gonna yeah, I'm gonna play two up front, just one behind the the, the main striker. So I'm gonna go Kevin Nolan. Um nice. I've never seen a player score so many goals in training. Really? Uh, honestly, <laughs> everything he's used to score off his bum elbow head like shin it in like it was just a, it was just unbelievable i just couldn't believe it. he always used to find the right areas in the pitch and obviously his career shows that he scored a lot of important goals for west yeah, ham sure. 
in that promoted season and then scoring some goals in the Prem, mostly for Newcastle and Bolton. Yeah, like obviously a fantastic career. But I'm going to go Kev, big Kev. Yeah, big Kev. Yeah, he's an unbelievable player and character as well. Yeah, top guy, top guy, and uh, it's nice because what because like you know you watch the team now, and where Kev used to do that thing where he used to like stand on the toe of the goalkeeper at the court at the corner. Yeah, he's, yeah. He, Mikel Antonio is doing that now, so it's yeah, like, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's always giving some some tips and that, doesn't he? So oh, no, yeah. done, Antonio doesn't done the chicken dance yet as a no, celebration. Yeah, he's That's too easy. Though, he? <laughs> no, I know he's done a few dances though, only not big Kev. Big Kev's got to be in yeah. there. I reckon Kev's got that. I reckon Kev's Kev's got that that, that dance trademark. That's why. Um, yeah, right. Yeah. Okay. Who's gonna Who's gonna be Who's gonna spearhead this attack then, Frank? Cole and Cole. Yeah, Cole and Cole's gonna be up front. Uh, Cole Cole. Right, uh, I've never seen a guy like jump and fall down so many times for headers and kind of chest it down and still do it for ninety minutes. Like yeah. take the battling and the bruising. And then he used to score a lot of worldy goals as well. He used to score a lot of like his goals. If they weren't tappings, there would be like a strike from distance or a volley or stuff like that. And he, he had that in his locker. So I'm going to go cut and call one for his longevity at the club. And yeah. two, he could play the lone striker really well for the club. So at the time for me, he, he was at his prime then. And um, he obviously got England call up as well while I was there. So I'm going to go. Yeah. Uh, Brilliant, yeah, and that's and yeah, that, that's funny. And yeah, as you said, he's 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 still in with the club and stuff. So and that's that's what's important at the moment because it's nice yeah. to have that sort of conju- He said people like Kevin's. It's still like, Zavon's obviously involved in the yeah, kids yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, Carl Cole, Cole, Cole gets it, but he's lucky though because if if Benny McCarthy was in his prime, it would have been Benny. If it was John Carew, <laughs> John Carew in his prime, it would have been John Carew. Yeah, you know, we had some names down there, but Carlton was the main one that always yeah. fit. We played him, and he, he did score enough goals for us to. Do whatever we wanted to do, so no, yeah, cool. Cool, yeah, cool, Frank. Man, it's been lovely chatting to you, bud. It's been oh, lovely. Man. I don't want to keep you, I don't want to keep you much longer because your kids are in, and that's what it's yeah, no, I'm fine, I'm gonna <laughs> I'm thank you so much for your time. No, I appreciate having me, mate, and keep doing what you're doing. It's, it's really Cheers, good. Man. Thank you to everyone that's watching. I uh, hope you yeah, stay safe and well. Um, like, share, subscribe. Anyway, for me and Frank, take care, everyone. Stay safe, wash those hands, come you irons, and we'll oh, see you again very, very soon. Take care, everyone. Bye bye. Oh,